world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Let's talk about the Prime Minister, I understand, to announce today the lifting of all COVID restrictions. That's something certainly I would welcome. I've always wanted this to have been a, a, a voluntary affair, people being able to make responsible choices. As we saw, they were perfectly able to do this last Christmas where we didn't see anything more than Plan B. But there have been two things that have been announced that are, do appear to be pretty controversial. I wonder if they are for you. First of all, let's talk about the, the, right, the, the requirement that you self-isolate between five to ten days if you do test positive for COVID. COVID. Um, do you think it's the right or the wrong thing for the Prime Minister to lift that rule? Well, look, there has to come a point which we move back to normality. Every pandemic comes to an end. What I'm confused about is when I hear people is, if they don't want to end it now, what will be the measures that allow us to move forward? What are they looking for? At the moment, you've got two thirds of people with their booster on board over of adults. You've got cases come down from 240,000 to less than 40,000, despite no removing measures. So when I hear MPs and parties going, we want to keep the measures in place. I'm asking, what is it they're looking for as a measure to say, then it's okay to remove them because it's not clear to me because I don't think it's going to get any better than what it is right now in terms of respiratory pathogens and illness. What we're asking, Julia, is people to move back to common sense. And again, we've talked about this, this position that if you're unwell, you're going to stay at home. Now, why that matters is because when you're unwell, that's the point of infectiousness, when you're most likely to transmit it or just before. But interestingly, the reason the testing doesn't work is because about a third to half people people by the time they get their test are already beyond that infectious yeah. state so keeping them in isolation is bad for the economy and bad for their well-being all around and presumably also i mean there, there are some people who are madly testing every single day who aren't going into a care home aren't dealing with an elderly relative aren't vulnerable but they're just you know the, the, the worried mm -hmm. well and we know there are an awful lot of those people goodness me they're all on social media um, and there'll be millions of people who don't test no interest in testing. They've probably had COVID a uh, long time, much earlier. They've been out working every single day. And frankly, if they did test positive, it would be a nightmare for their finances because they don't get sick pay. Uh, and and, and they, they simply don't know. So in a way, this is kind of the reality already, isn't it? Well, look, let's look at how much the testing is really interesting. In January, it cost us about £2 billion for that testing. Now, if you wanted to put 1p on income tax, it'd raise about £5.5 billion. That's our equivalent. If we keep testing going for about three months, it'll cost us 1p on income tax. No. There's no such thing as free. We keep saying free testing. No, we have to pay for it. We have to pay in it either alone or on taxation. So over the next year, if you want to keep testing and trace going, you're talking three to four p on income tax. Yeah. Now, my question is, would this be your priority for that money in healthcare? It wouldn't even make my top 10. I would be talking about cancer care, all of the unplanned admissions, mental health. That's where I put that income. So when somebody comes to you and says, we want to keep it going, ask them, Julie, is this your priority now for healthcare, Or do you think there are other things that matter that we should put this money into right and now? And we, we're hearing a lot of this, that the sage scientists, certainly the independent, self-appointed uh, anti-sage scientists, and many, uh, many people on social media who were saying, do you just accept that, you know... A, a hundred people a day will die with COVID. Is that acceptable to you? And I always respond, well, how many cancer deaths are acceptable to you? How many suicides? How many heart disease deaths? How many other problems? We Again, still so much focus on COVID. And as you say, even if someone says it's worth every penny for us to do that testing to save X many lives, well, if, if, if it's worth every penny to save all those lives, it surely must be worth every penny to save all the other lives. And yet we're not spending that money and the same level on treating cancer from often much younger people, mental health. Uh, we know that there's been an explosion in, you know, in, in problems there. Um, um, and it, why do you think so many medical professionals, so many scientists, so many people who, who should be concerned about, you know, every ailment and illness and risk to us still are only obsessed with just one? Can I take some separate there, though? You said scientist advisors. They are separate to what I consider medical clinical professionals. They have a right. very different viewpoint right now. But what we're hearing is about people from don't understand healthcare. Very singular view, understand one infectious disease, and that's all they want to talk up. But what you're talking about is huge issues, like one in seven adults on antidepressants. In some towns and cities, it's one in four in this country. Good Lord. That's unbelievable. So what I would say is actually what has been an advice? 
advance is a dashboard would be helpful for all of those diseases and all of those deaths. Because if we did have it across the board, we'd see priorities going right now, we should be talking about, right, we need to fix cancer care. If you have symptoms, I want same day access, 24, 48 hours to treatment to prevent the stage shift, which is so deadly and gives us such poor performances across Europe. If we had that focus, the same as what we'd had on COVID, we could really make a difference right now. But again, we're distracted yeah. by measures saying we want to keep test and trace going when we should be saying the opposition should be going, let's fix cancer care. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. We spoke to an opposition MP, Karen Smith, a little bit earlier, and she said they want to see the scientific evidence for, for you know, ending uh, some of these measures. When I asked, well, what, when did you ask to see the scientific evidence for bringing these things in. We know that Britain has been, I mean, almost unique, not quite unique, but almost unique in terms of the amount of testing we've done. Is there any evidence that this wide scale testing and the free testing, except when you're traveling in and out of the country, which is apparently such a terrible risk uh, for, for lots of this time that you had to pay hundreds often to get tested. Um, wh wh why, is there any evidence that that has actually helped tackle the, 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 the pandemic, given that lots of other countries that are much better than us don't test on anything like the same scale? I think, I think you're right, Julie. Our testing has been significant. From a position of ground zero, we seem to have shifted the complete opposite way by doing almost ne nearly half a billion tests. I think there's only Denmark at similar levels to us. Has it had an impact when over two thirds of us had the infection? I think you're going to have to argue very, very much so that it hasn't made a difference. Also remember though, the testing is not gonna to go to zero. We're still gonna see it in hospitals. We're still gonna see targeted testing. I'm aware that's gonna be available for those who are very elderly or those who have access to antiviral treatments. So it's not disappearing totally. What we're talking about is a much more targeted approach for vaccines, for testing and for treatments that affects those that are the most risk, which is generally those over 75 yeah. or those with other comorbidities or immuno suppressive diseases that's the strategy we require and focus on all the other diseases while we're doing that and if people are arguing against that they just don't understand healthcare and the wider context of what's required now just finally there's some talks of continuing the two tests a week recommended for children in schools what do you make of that yeah, no, look, I mean, I, I could put children, the priorities for children, we should be removing all of the all of the uh, measures in children that do not require the testing. One of the key components for children is to build an immune system over a life course. We have to let them get on and we should be prioritizing children, their mental health, their social well-being to get back to normal. Anybody arguing against that? has to say, I have ethical and social issues about preventing society getting back to normal. At the moment, you've got your vaccines on board, your risk is low, you should be prioritising children and their well-being right now. Good talk. Hot talk. talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.